Excellent, Todd. Uh, okay, uh, I guess we've really laid down the groundwork here, so it's perfect. It's a perfect time to uh, a good good segue for embracing alienation. Um, firstly, this is going to be the book that I'll be gifting to non philosophy readers from your uh, corpus. The reason is because it's just, I mean, you've just got got the sensibility to write so clearly, uh, and I, I don't know how you've developed that. Maybe maybe it's just your your inclination and it's just such an easy read. I, I read it in like five days, I think. Oh, that's great. That really, that really warms my heart actually. I, I mean, I try to write as clearly as possible and, and inclination, I mean, it's, it's because I find things very hard and I, so I try to make it, I'm just writing it to make it clear to myself. And so if that makes it clear to other people, then all the better. So it's, yeah, it's really it's, not like I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's not like I'm dumbing it down. I'm just writing it for myself. And oh, so, no, not at all. It's also quite funny because yeah. it's like, it's a very, the the subtitle, why we shouldn't try to find ourselves. It's, it sounds, and again, this is no way to, is this like a, a criticism. It sounds a bit like self-helpy, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Someone might well, I have to, here, here, I, I can't take credit for the subtitle because the press forced that on me. I had something. I had something a little less self-healthy, but but I think they were right to to change to that actually because I agree. It, I think I, it, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it really like kind the of ideology it, of our time. A big part of this is like you know self-actualization, finding yourself, finding your true self, um, and and so <laughs> you completely subvert that and you say no, that's that's right, the wrong right, thing. Right. Um, so uh, to to get started, Todd, how about we we try to probably outline uh, just your general intimations on alienation and why you wanted to write a book on alienation. Uh, but also maybe since we were talking about contradiction, um, how this more ontological Hegelian concept of contradiction connects to your in, your insights on alienation and your thinking around, around alienation. Yeah, so let's do the, that question first. So I think that, um... So contradiction, you said it right, is ontological for Hegel, and I totally accept that. So that means that everything is contradictory, right? So ever, so the rock is contradictory because it's ultimately just destroyed by the wind and the water, right? The earth is contradictory because the sun's going to go nova and destroy it. Like everything is self, it's, it's at odds with itself and will eventually be des destroyed. And so that, that contradiction, and then, and then so... The relationship between that and alienation, it, it, I, as I see it, is that uh, when you're alienated in language, so when you're a subject, when you're a speaking subject, you can get a, I don't know if this is the best way to put it, but you can get some kind of purchase on your contradictory status. So you don't have to just, I, I, I think I say this in maybe in the Hegel book, but not in the other, you don't have to just suffer your contradiction. You can actually... And you can take it up, you can enact it on yourself, you can embrace your contradiction. So the book is called Embracing Alienation, but alienation is itself a kind of embrace of contradiction. It's a way of like, to, to put it in, in Hegel's terms, it's a way of making, if contradiction is the in itself of what we are, alienation is for itself. It's like we make this contradiction into something that we take up and that's why we're alienated. So we, we, all of a sudden, we don't just suffer contradiction, we enact it on ourselves. And th there is a psychoanalytic term for this, which is death drive. We, we're constantly, we undermine ourselves, we contradict ourselves, we, we do things that are bad for us, we, we, we find ways to damage our lives, all these things. And, and that's, that's alienation. And that's the, so that, that way in which we're out of, think with ourselves and not harmonious, that's the way that contradiction manifests itself in subjectivity. So that's the, that's how, that's how to me, those two terms relate. And that's why it's not, that's why the book's not just embracing contradiction because alienation is a special subjective case of contradiction. It's contradiction translated from ontology into subjectivity. And so that's the relationship between the Hegel book and, and this book, basically. And then the reason why I wanted to write it was I was, I thought that even the, even the thinkers that I most 
uh, admired, like obviously, you know, Marx, uh, um, Adorno, uh, Lukács, like a whole, like all the thinkers on the left that I admired, they st they all had this idea of alienation is a problem that we have to overcome or get rid of or solve. And I thought, well, I think that's not right. And I also thought that Hegel kind of is the thinker who shows us, no, actually alienation is freedom. Like we're like, we, we become, when we're alienated from who we are, that's when we become free from, from what we were made into. And so that I always was taken, that idea I really found. And when you said self-help, like I really like that idea that well, the real help is to like get distanced from what you were made into, right? Like that's because that's what freedom is, as I see it. Like free, like you're if you're just following out. I don't know. I grew up in a really conservative. I talk. Of, I have more. I think personal crap in this. I, I apologize to people for that. Oh, no, not <laughs> at all. It like, makes it even better. Yeah. Okay. But I, 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 I just kind of hopefully no one that I know. That, <laughs> We'll read it because there's some stuff in there that's pretty. I mean, I don't know, especially in the last chapter about uh, the football team I played on in in the yes. university, the, uh, which is pretty. Girl, the all, yeah, the whole, the whole. <laughs> I, I gave away all the secrets. <laughs> I just got a note about uh, we're having some kind of reunion for the 20, 35 years. I don't know what, but. Uh, I thought I just can't go to that because I just. <laughs> what if someone saw this? I'm looking for uh, kids, yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I think it's like, like if, are you just the thing that you were made into, right? Or are you, are, are there ways in which you're distanced from that thing? Like you're alienated from, and, and, and your freedom consists in being alienated from what you were made into, from what I think I constantly use this term from the givens of your existence. And so I felt like that was, and I didn't think anybody had was saying that. And so that's why I felt like I needed to, I needed to say it. I was a little worried that it wouldn't, no one would, I don't know, that it would, it would, it would seem just too bizarre to people, but it, it seems like it's, it's gotten a good response, which is a surprise to me, but it always surprises me when a book of mine gets a good response. So, uh, that's probably not. Oh, come on, Todd. <laughs> no, it's yeah, true. It it's it really true. Trust me at all, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always think like zero people are going to read it. So. No, no. In fact, since you shared a bit of a personal anecdote, if I could share one, I'm sorry again for getting. Sure, sure. But no, I, I, I actually am a migrant to Australia, so I grew up in Sri Lanka, and we moved here when I when I was younger. And I remember, you know, when I was young, and my parents telling me we're moving to Australia, I was like, oh, thank God, because I couldn't stand Sri Lankan culture. I just I felt so distant from it. And there was so many things about it. It just didn't feel like I didn't fit in. And then yeah. of course, when we moved to Australia, I felt the same thing. I was like, I just can't. Right. Then, right. So I felt this right. alienation in Sri Lanka and then now in Australia too. And you still uh, feel it. Yeah. And I still do. And then what I realized was, you know, as you said, the kind of the, the, the act of emancipation is to completely embrace this alienation, but also in some sense, accept that we truly are self-divided subjects. I mean, we are alienated even from ourselves. Like we don't even know what we desire. And, and right, exactly. that's truly exactly. something that that's truly a, a, a philosophy of freedom. And, and I can see what, I can see how your, 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 your thinking is very much, it's very Sartrean even, you know, existentialist because yes, yeah. this kind of em embracing of our alienation, you know, and being in nothingness, Sartre talks about it, you know, that hell is other people and all of that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I think he really, I, I mean, I hear this word so much today, the community, you know, my community, my community. And, and I think Sartre is so great on yeah, your community is like hell is other is other it's hellish, right? Like it's nothing like my culture is nothing to whenever anybody says like, oh, what do you what are your roots? I'm like, look, I I, I am glad to be away from my roots. Like exactly. do not pin me yeah. I am not that thing, right? And I think that that's I think that's I whenever anybody celebrates their roots, I just I I I you know I I do you know this line from this uh, Nazi playwright, I released the catch of my Browning. Like I just, I, I uh, you know, I, 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 I just find that that it says his, his, the idea is like, when I hear the word culture, I, I reach for my gun. And I feel like that's, 
I'm, you know, I'm against the Nazis on everything, except I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like culture is such a, it's a trap. And I think people really uh, want to find something in it. But they, the problem is that, of course, even if they found it, it's a trap. And it's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a betrayal of your freedom. But, but of course, you never find it, right? Like, you, you always feel like you, you know, you, you don't feel at home in Sri Lanka, and then you don't feel at home in Australia. I didn't feel at home in the Midwest and I, I don't feel at home in Vermont. Like, I think that it's always the, yeah, that's the way everybody uh, experiences it. But I think they, I think there's a kind of uh, a, 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 a almost unspoken, like, don't say that, like try to make yourself fit in. And, and, but I think that not fitting in is really, really important. I agree. In fact, here's where, you know, in fact, put it crudely, that kind of the, that was a universalist point you made there, right? That we all have this universal alienation. But yeah. but uh, uh, the problem is, you know, in our, you think in modernity, and I know in the book you say that modernity really, uh, you know, exposes our alienation. Um, but the problem I, I'd still say, and I, I think you'd agree here, would, would be kind of the neoliberal ideology. In some sense, we have this, you know, Zizek talks about the super ego injunction is enjoy self actualize so there is yeah. this idea that you need to be your best self you need to you need to like rise above everyone else above your culture and and be your best self but that too is extremely oppressive there's nothing alienating right. about that right. it's probably even worse right. than part of a culture where you're told to self actualize i agree i agree Rather this whole like, you know an old fashioned yeah. be be a dutiful good kantian <laughs> You know, but you know, carry out your duties. The, the, the worst thing you can tell a person is be your best self. <laughs> I know, like, like that idea, carpe diem, right? Like that idea of, you know, I was I was listening to this French comedian named uh, Blanche Gardin, and she said, carpe diem is an anagram for sa de prime. Like that's depressing, <laughs> and I thought that's perfect because it's like that. Be your best self is such a horrible super egoic injunction and i think you're right that it really what it's saying to you is you can overcome your alienation right yes. like that's what it's saying for sure because yeah. i find that in some sense you are also saying this you also make a i'm not saying you're giving a solution certainly not but the by by saying again the the problem becomes a solution in the hegelian sense by saying that you yeah. can't it's insurmountable that itself you find you get a feeling of relief and you can create a distance from this this the self or whatever this hellish place it is you know so yeah i agree totally yeah i think that um, that's right